hello, 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 and welcome to the Morning Man Sports Podcast, wherever you may be getting your podcast from, SoundCloud.com, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and now on YouTube. Guys, we got a loaded show today, so let's go ahead and get straight into it. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and preview my thoughts on this weekend's kind of like qualifying for the OWL Stage 1 competition. So this is actually going to the playoffs in this certain situation for Stage stage 1. So start off with on Saturday, March 16th, which is uh, just tomorrow. Washington Justice versus the Paris Eternal. If you go into match details, you will have the Washington Justice and Paris Eternal on Game 1 on Buzan. Game 2 is King's Row. Game 3 is King's Row. And Game 4 is Dorado. In this certain situation, guys, I am pro. I'm going to say Paris Eternal wins game one. Game two, Paris Eternal. Then coming off in the second half, you got the Washington Justice winning game three. And then this is really where it really gets intense right here, but I want to say that Paris Eternal will win this one. So you got a 3-1 situation headed into this matchup. Going back, we have, this computer is really slow today, uh, this London Spitfire versus Seoul Dynasty at 4.30, Boston Uprising will face the Dallas Fuel, and going into Boston and Dallas Fuel, Dallas Fuel is sitting at number 5 in Sage 1 playoffs, while the Boston Uprising is right there at the cutoff. So, in this sort of situation, I do believe that Boston Uprising could win this and make their spot in the Stage 1 playoffs. And then finally, Saturday at 7.30 p.m., you get the Atlanta Rain versus the, now, excuse me for butchering the names, but the Shindao Hunters. <laughs> yes, that's right, guys. The, I'm just going to say the Hunters in this situation. Atlanta Rain, currently in this situation, are at the number six spot. They are tied with the San Francisco Shock. Uh, and the only reason they are tied is the map differential of plus five for both teams. So in this certain situation, uh, I will say that the Atlanta Rain will be, defeat the Hunters. If you look at the Hunters, they are ranked 17 in the Stage stage 1 playoffs. Which that automatically goes ahead and eliminates them. First say, but that is, that is dependent on if the rest of the teams on Sunday will f- just, you know, fail to show up. So going into Sunday, you got the Philadelphia Fusion. And, and uh, by the way, I forgot to even mention this, but the London Spitfire wins over Soul Dynasty. It a uh, three to two, yeah. No, excuse me, three to one victory. Boston Uprising wins. I'm gonna say four zero in this situation. I think Dallas Fuel has got that confidence built up way too high, and Boston Uprising is going to make them come crashing to the ground very soon. In Atlanta Rain, I do see this a 4-0 sweep. And then on Sunday, Philadelphia Fusion versus the Paris Eternal. I'm going to say that the Philadelphia Fusion is going to keep up their hot streak. And if you go into it right now, if the playoffs were happening, uh, the Philadelphia Fusion is sitting at rank number 4. And I actually do think that they are going to secure their spot with that win over the Paris Eternal. That is sitting at rank 16. Then after that, you got the Washington Justice versus the Florida Mayhem. Uh, this is just really a just, you know, hey, give me some spotlight <laughs> or whatever. Because Florida Mayhem is sitting at rank 18 and the Washington Justice is sitting at 19 
with the Valiant sitting at the bottom 20. <laughs> And then after that, the second to the last match is the Houston Outlaws versus the Atlanta Reign. At 6 p.m., I'm going to have to say that the Atlanta Reign will win this one again. <laughs> I know it ain't much like preparation because the Atlanta Reign, this is their first back-to-back um, -back games that they will be having. And it's at the, you know, at the freaking playoffs almost pretty much. But still, the Houston Outlaws will win this one. I mean, excuse me. The Atlanta Reign will win this one. 3-1. to one. I, I would just have to say 3-1 to one Atlanta Reign. And then finally, the primetime match. The Charge versus, versus the Titans. And if you go into the situation right now, the Charge is sitting just... I mean, not even coachable right now at the playoff, like, you know, cutoff, like, on top right there. So they're in the playoffs, but they got to win over the Vancouver Titans. But I just don't see that happen. I see the Vancouver Titans. Yes, they will get their money's worth in the situation, but I think it'll be a 3-2 sweep for the Vancouver Titans, and they will, of course, secure their number two spot in the Sage 1 playoffs. And if you go on over to the playoffs itself, this is right. This right here, I honestly don't know how the format will work. I will have to see what it looks like uh, next Thursday on March 21st. Make sure I am right on the information. Yes, I am right on the information. So I'll have to. I will post the the rankings of what the stage one playoffs are going to look like. And the stage, the stages top eight teams will compete in a seeded playoff bracket with five hundred thousand dollars on the line, and everything, like I said, will start March twenty first on that Thursday, starting at nine p.m. that night on Eastern Standard Time. So that is very late. <laughs> I'm gonna say. Alrighty guys, so we are now actually going to go into a kind of like a freestyle in this certain situation. I really just going off the top of my head and this is WrestleMania 35 thoughts as of right now going into the second week leading up to WrestleMania. So with this being like my honest thoughts right here. I do like the certain situations that are happening. Kofi Kingston is now finally getting like that mega push. And he's, of course, he's going to, you know, prove Mr. McMahon wrong in a certain situation come next Tuesday when the, in that gauntlet match. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's against Randy Orton, the bar. So that'd be like uh, Sheamus and Cesaro. Um, Daniel Bryan's buddy, um, Oh my gosh, I forget his name, and I want to say Samoa Joe, I think it is, in this certain situation. So, Kofi Kingston is in a gauntlet match, and he, he's going to prove himself. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and then Vince McMahon is like, alright, no, you don't still don't deserve the chance. And then Kofi, he's just going to snap. Kofi Kingston is going to snap in this certain situation, and he's going to tell Vince... You know, I bust my ass for 20, I mean, not 27 years, gosh dang, uh, 11 years for the company, and I just beat all your guys, and you still won't give me a title shot? Hell no, and then, like, I, I don't think they're going to go the Daniel Bryan route in this certain situation. I think what's going to happen, you know, maybe the New Day... Oh man, this would be epic if the New Day would go off script and say, if you don't give Kofi what he wants, we're all, all three of us are going to go to AEW. Oh my God, that would be so epic. <laughs> and the events, uh, actually that would kind of make sense in a certain situation because AEW is being more, it has, has had more success over WWE here lately of selling out arenas. So... If if they happen to do that, which I don't think they will, but it would be nice, 
All right, say if they do, say if they do, Kofi, Biggie, and Xavier Woods threatens Vince McMahon to go to AEW if Kofi don't, is not in the WWE title match at WrestleMania. Vince gives in, like, okay, okay, fine, then you're, you're going to be the tall guy, don't blah, 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 blah. But if that don't happen, I think personally what is going to happen is maybe maybe a heel turn um, against the New Day because Kofi wants to be WWE Champion and then say he wins at WrestleMania and they're like, all right, get the band back together, New Day. <laughs> I, I, I just see that happen. I really do. And, but then there again, uh, they could just be breaking up the New Day. For all I know, because it has been rumored for several months that the new they will be breaking up. So, who knows? We have to wait and see what kind of like supplemental hints we are going to be receiving within the next three weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check my calendar right here. So, let's just see. All right, so Sunday, so 17th. One, two, three, really, yeah, four more weeks, and that is my dog barking. I do apologize for anybody who has to listen to her bark. Oh my goodness, she does this every time I do a podcast. But anyway, so um, now going on to Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar, uh, this this feud it just seems, it seems boring right now because it's the same promos, that Paul Hammond keeps bringing out and Seth Rollins I mean yeah he is sort of like a new challenger for Brock Lesnar but let's all face it he Seth Rollins technically beat Brock Lesnar at Wrestlemania 31 if I'm not mistaken for the WWE Championship but of course he pinned Roman Reigns in that sense so still though you beat the, the Beast Incarnate for the WWE Championship and but not physically pin him so i think that's what's going to happen and for roman reigns i think the heel turn is coming uh if it's not coming then wwe has other plans to have maybe roman reigns stay at a mid card level like finn balor <laughs> for for a good little while to let seth rollins and, you know, like other opponents like, say, Drew McIntyre, uh, Baron Corbin, you know, whoever could be like an actual threat to the Universal Championship, I see that happening. And then, say, like, SummerSlam rolls around and then Roman Reigns starts throwing up hints that he is going to be turning heel and going up against Seth Rollins. I do see that happening. Uh, speaking of... Drew McIntyre, he had a very phenomenal matchup against Dean Ambrose this past Monday. And uh, it was a, I think it was a whole no hold bar match. And I really loved that. Drew McIntyre looked dominant. And for my honest opinion, I th if Dean Ambrose does not get a match at WrestleMania, then what's going to happen is probably Drew McIntyre wins the Andre Battle Royal. The th was it 30 men or 30 men in, in the ring at the same time and they're eliminating everybody and Drew McIntyre wins that. I see Drew McIntyre winning that and going on, if Backlash is going to be a thing this year, I see Backlash having Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre fight one another for the Universal Championship and of course at the time it won't, it won't happen for Drew. But later on down the road, Drew McIntyre will have the Universal Championship around his waist. If not, maybe the WWE Championship. Uh, tag teams, um, I know the Usos kind of like throw hints at Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy this past Tuesday on SmackDown Live. And I'm quite excited for that. I'm not I'm not as excited about the situation because Jeff and Matt are kind of like older in this situation and they've been in the company for many years. And so if this was kind of like back in like 08 but you have the Usos of today, oh my god, this would this would be phenomenal right here. This would be like 
I would honestly say, you know, this would probably be like the, the main event. If we're going to tag team match as a main event at WrestleMania, I would love that. Now moving on to Becky Lynch versus uh, Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. <laughs> I think this is kind of leading up to where uh, Ronda is, of course she is the the ultimate heel now in this situation and Charlotte's a heel and Becky Lynch she's stone cold so she's both in that situation um but Rhonda is kind of like acting stupid in this situation she's making things harder on herself now wherever you put a third person into a match which automatically makes it a triple threat match go figure it's a no disqualification now and it's a no count out. So, in a way, Rhonda thinks, in her opinion, she's going to beat the holy hell out of both Charlotte and Becky with like maybe a kendo stick or a chair or just whatever she could put her hands on. But in this situation, you know, Becky could, you know, sort of team up with Charlotte to beat up Rhonda. And Becky could team up with Rhonda to beat the hell up out of Charlotte. It just works in a constant circle in this situation. And I, me personally, I like how WWE is bugging Rhonda to be kind of like stupid in this situation to make herself look stupid. Uh, but now I will say this, uh, at Fastlane, I really didn't like how Rhonda did come out there and, you know, hit Becky. In order to put Becky in the triple threat match at WrestleMania, I was wanting Becky to win against Charlotte Flair because I think that would still build up her character, on, even on one freaking leg, dude. I mean, for Becky to win against Charlotte Flair, who was 100% healthy, beat Charlotte on one leg, and then go into WrestleMania, but no, all we got was Ronda coming out there, you know, like just barely even touching Becky and then like, okay, Becky wins via disqualification. You're going on to WrestleMania. I I just didn't like that. But still, nevertheless, I'm glad though that Becky was added back to this match, even though we all knew it. <laughs> uh, Red Jordan and AJ Styles is pretty much having a phenomenal <laughs> I see what I did there. But anyways, they are having a phenomenal feud going on right now. I love how Randy Orton is really edgy in this situation. Uh, whenever he said, like, listen, AJ Styles, I'm your landlord, and the in the rent is due, you SOB, and I'm not going to say the whole thing on this podcast right here, but he, but he said the full curse word of that SOB. And I was like, oh my gosh, the WWE is really trying to get out of this PC era and trying to work on the, the deal with Fox that's coming in October. So I do like that. Uh, this feud is definitely going to heat up for the next four weeks. And I'm, I'm honestly excited to see it. Uh, Andrade Cianamas and uh, Rey Mysterio. I think that's going to be probably a pre-show match at WrestleMania. Just the way the card is, well, like how the momentum is going for both these men. Um, they've had, of course, what now, three U.S. title shots and lost. And I mean, it's not their fault that they've lost because, you know, you had Samoa Joe and our truth <laughs> And... But still, I think them two are going to, you know, have more of a heated battle. Probably about the th second week left until WrestleMania. And then what's going to happen, uh, Andrade is going to challenge Rey Mysterio. Probably like a, um, if I beat you, you know, you take the mask off. So some kind of just stipulation like that. And I'm sorry if I am pronouncing Andrade's name wrong. I will just now just keep saying Andrade. Andrade. Yeah, there we go. I'll just say Andrade. But anyways, uh, I do like that uh, feud right there, but I think this is going to end up on the pre-show. Uh, next up is Shane O'Mac versus The Miz. 
Now, The Miz was not on TV this past Tuesday while Shane McMahon was out in the ring saying, look, you work for me and you have no choice but to fight me at WrestleMania. So, we also know that The Miz is a babyface now. And I just cannot wrap my head around it that The Miz is a babyface. But this also sets up two... We're made, all right, so obviously, if, I, if I'm announcing this right, The Miz next Tuesday or the following Tuesday after could possibly say, okay, yeah, I'll face you, Shane, but I won't sell that out of you. And then and Shane's like, okay, what you got? The Miz, like, you know, goes around, you know, walk around the ring and and then the crowd is like, you know, just chanting something out of crazy. And he's like, I want your career. Like that, you know, like saying career versus career kind of situation. And then if that's the case, you automatically know The Miz is going to win in this certain situation. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think he signed a four, maybe five year deal. And I think he's on his second, third deal, third year right now. If I'm not mistaken in that situation. But... After WrestleMania, so this is like kind of like post WrestleMania, I do see maybe The Miz winning the WWE Championship here in 2019 as a babyface. And then, I mean, like the second, I mean, he like grabs the title. He's a heel. I will be shocked if I'm right on that one, which I think I will be in this situation because The Miz. He is deserving of the WWE Championship, and I think he needs to hold on to it for a very, very long time. The Women's Tag Team Championship, I am just kind of just, if right now, I mean, you got Nia Jax being a bully, and you got the lackluster, nobody cares for Tamina. Just team up with Nia Jax. I mean, honestly, the what, what you've been seeing on uh, Fastlane and Monday Night Raw was Natalia and Beth Phoenix are going to face them too, and then you got Sasha and Bailey over here attacking Nia Jax and Tamina. So you don't know what's going to happen. And then you got the Iconics over on SmackDown saying um, the tag team titles will look iconic like that over on SmackDown. So what what in the world is going to happen here? What in the world is going to happen? I think the more tag teams that are going to get involved in this situation, like, you know, Fire and Desire, but I think they're going to be breaking up here soon. So, but say if they don't. Say if they don't. So you get Fire and Desire, the Iconics, Balsam Hug Connection, and um, Alicia Fox and Mickey James. Say you got them. It could be like a four tag team women's tag team championship match. And it could be in the style of maybe like a ladder match. Or you could just have it as a, like a traditional tag team match in that situation. Uh, the Intercontinental Championship uh, right now, Bobby Lashley is now again the... T well, with him returning, he's a two-time Intercontinental Champion. I don't know about his you know past uh, career back in the WWE, back whenever it was like ECW and stuff. But... um. Bobby Lashley, I think what's going to happen, if I'm not mistaken, they might have, they might could have a ladder match in this situation, where then now you add in Finn Balor, Bobby Lashley, uh, Leah Rush, uh, oh my gosh, maybe some like low level cards that could go up into the mid level and compete for the Intercontinental Championship. Or, Drew McIntyre, you know, like with the Dolph Ziggler situation, Drew McIntyre turned on Dolph Ziggler, so in this certain situation, you can have Drew McIntyre turn on Bobby Lashley. So I would love to see that, and Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania 35 for the Intercontinental Championship, and have Drew McIntyre win it. And that will build up to where Drew McIntyre kind of like 
represents the title well. He does everything right. He's not having no outside help in the situation. He's a lone wolf and he's getting the job done. And let's just say, like the pay-per-view before SummerSlam, Drew loses to Intercontinental Championship. He puts himself in a universal number one contenders match, go on to SummerSlam and possibly win it. I would love to see that. Uh, so guys, if I'm missing uh, anything, please let me know in the comment section, both on the podcast platforms and here on YouTube, whichever one is comfortable for you to be commenting on and just wherever you be listening to, it really don't matter. Uh, I'm actually putting a lot of work into this, guys. I am definitely trying to make sure that the content is up to date for you and so way you can have the best sports information that surrounds you. Anyways, guys, that is all the time I have for today, but I sure hope you did enjoy. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button on both Spotify, SoundCloud, Google, and YouTube. Till then, guys, I'm Cole Morgan. We'll catch you guys later.